Hi, I'm Obi Osinowando, and this is our few minutes <laughs> nuggets. Developing career paths for employees to follow positively impact employees and organizations alike. To create a career path for your employees, it's very important to learn what to include. Career paths for employees are clear goals and milestones that detail the progression from one job to another within an organization. It clearly shows how movement happens in your organization. So establishing career paths for employees helps them visualize a clear future within the company or the organization. Benefits include employee retention, developing you know, the professional skills of the workforce, motivation to meet both personal and organizational goals, improve morale, career satisfaction, multi-generational workplace, facilitation of culture change, um, employees' sense of purpose. It also creates an employee-centric culture and it helps you compete with other employers favorably in your job market. There are different types of career paths, which can be the career ladders. These are clearly defined paths that encourage increasing responsibilities and pay. Example, a product engineer may grow into a senior product engineer and then up until the director and the VP. There's also the career lattices. This encourage employees to start a new position with totally different responsibilities, but with the same pay grade. It's intended to broaden their skills and experience. And then this is this happens usually within a short duration in the company, maybe one year. And then the encore careers, it's used to encourage people to continue working as they get older by providing fewer hours and responsibilities. So when you're ready to create an internal career path, it's important that you start by discussing the goals of a career path and how um, they will be used. You definitely, definitely need leadership buy-in and approval because um, leaders will have to decide on the number of levels, you know, whether they want a flat or hierarchical organization, how frequently promotions should occur. Now, for your own clarity on expectations, ask detailed questions like, how long do we expect people to stay in one level before getting promoted? Do we prefer more promotions um, with smaller increases or a flat structure with fewer levels? Are there separate career paths for individual contributors and people managers? And then what are the pros and cons of each decisions made? How will our structure support both the vertical and the lateral moves? Note that in designing a career path, you can start with a simple framework and get agreement on how you know to document it. Ask yourself what roles and levels need to be included. Are there separate paths for managers and individual contributors? The next step will be to update or create your organizational chart. After this, you then prioritize by starting with just one job family and use this for others as you progress. You must define job positions in each family clearly with responsibilities. And then you create the roadmaps for each business function. Note that the number of job families you create is determined by, you know, how many different disciplines there are in your organization. A job family is simply a group of similar positions. For instance, you may have job families for engineering, for marketing, for product management, for logistics, and so on. And within each family, there will be different roles. A very important step is to also create a, a manager's working group. Ensure that in selecting this, you choose people who care about the work and understand the value. Collaboration with respective managers is key as they will help you tremendously in filling critical components of the jobs, including the levels of complexity, decision making that define each job levels, the technical skills required to advance from one level to the next. It will also, they will also help you on the how much you know, hands-on or technical proficiency is required mm -hmm. of managers versus contributors. Note that it is helpful to find a mentor or a leader who can help you act as a sounding board if you get stuck, because you will. Also consider looking into compensation data for the roles that you're working on 
to help analyze the market data and create a salary structure that fits well with your levels and the titles. It is always worth reviewing internal data also before making the sweeping changes. And do not be afraid to use expert help when needed. Another step is to identify the training needs. You know, clearly assess whether you can bring employees along the path that you have created. Let's start with documenting the in-house and outsource training programs that you have in place. And then ask yourself, can your employees advance up the ladder with what you currently have? Is mentorship with peers or leaders an important part of your culture? Do you provide continuing education? Mm -hmm. Review also your exit interviews to ascertain why employees quit your company. And then you survey your current staff and ask what type of trainings uh, do they want, um, which departments recruit internally and which departments hire outside. Now, after identifying the needs, you then create a training and development you know, program. Your next step is is then to document your career path program. Recall that at this point in the design, you would already have your organizational charts, your job roles, profiles, mentors, you know, your career paths and roadmaps, and your training schedules. And next will be to map each employee's career path. This is putting your career path program to work. For new hires, you will do this during the onboarding. And with existing employees, their managers will do this during the performance reviews. Note that it is important that you pilot first, maybe with one job family, a team or a department, and then make final tweaks and adjustments. This prevents the rollout from getting delayed due to maybe perfectionism or making overwhelming sweeping changes at once because career path um, design is overwhelming. Unless I forget to mention, you must identify early measures of success and ways to gather feedback from everyone who uses what you've built. Finally, incorporate your program by identifying how you can make your career path program part of your company culture. And it starts with recruiting and continues throughout the employment life cycle of each individual. One of the most gratifying parts of creating career paths is that it's so, so easy to see an immediate impact. You would hear people reference them in promotion conversations and, and performance um, feedback. Managers will routinely use them in you know, the career conversations with their teams, which in, reduces the pressure that they feel in making certain difficult conversations. In time, you should see the number of internal moves and promotions increase. <laughs> and this makes all the hard work worthwhile. Thank you.